Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome today everybody to the second annual Dial of the Year Awards. When I gave out the first Dial of the Year Award last year, I didn't really anticipate it becoming a series, but it kind of makes sense that it does. And last year's award went to Gary from Birmingham's beautiful Leaf Dial JDM Citizen, a gorgeous, subtle, ever-changing light catcher that I know has proven to be popular and a big hit for the company. This year the award goes to, drum roll please. The Seiko Pressage Cocktail Time Star Bar Limited Edition SARY183. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Seiko make arguably the best dials that you can buy on a watch for less than a grand. And you know what? This is one of those. Look at that thing. I think this watch looks absolutely stunning, hence why I just bought one. Now you saw the pop-up. I bought this one straight from Japan through buy.jp and they gave me a voucher to put towards the cost. I will of course leave a link and a discount voucher for all of you if you want to start shopping directly from Japan through buy in the description of the video. Now I have been stalking the Star Bar for some time. It is still possible to buy them new, but with Bai, I was able to pick this one up second hand. Let's flip the camera and have a look at some more very pretty pictures. Okay, so this video is gonna be 80% dial shots and 20% the rest. Let's get that 20% over with then, shall we? As discussed, I got this one straight from Japan. It's second hand, uh, decidedly second hand from certain angles, but I paid 350 Aussie for it plus delivery, which is a little over one third of the new price these days. This is a limited edition. As such, it is now commanding 1000 plus Aussie. So I still feel okay despite a couple of scuffs on the Harlex crystal. Let's be honest, it's only a matter of time before I scratch every Harlex crystal. So this one just came pre-scratched. This is the box, slightly larger than the usual Seiko Fair, unnecessarily large instruction manual, and a cocktail recipe card, if only I spoke Japanese. 15 milliliters of something and 45 milliliters of something else. Build in a highball and serve. And there is the watch. Now I blame this purchase squarely on a chap called Tim who has one of these and is a member of an Aussie Facebook group and keeps posting amazing pictures of it there. That's where I first saw it and he inspired me to buy this one. Now this form factor may look familiar to you. I have looked at a couple of cocktail times from this series before, those being the Negroni and the Tequila Sunset of all things. Those two had some of the most intense and outstanding dials I've seen on Seiko's, but this star bar Hojicha SARY183 slash SRPF43 takes it to the next level. Like the Negroni and the Tequila Sunset, this one is 38 millimeters in diameter, has a thickness of 12.1, a lug to lug of exactly 45 mil, 20 mil between the lugs, so you will not have a problem replacing this strap if you want to, but it's actually pretty good, so you probably won't even want to. Crystal is boxed, domed, hard legs, mineral. Water resistance is 5 ATM. As supplied, it weighs 64 grams, and the movement is a 4R35 by Seiko, of course. And you can see it today through the display case back. There's a nice gold rotor on there too. For some reason, Seiko's 4R35s have 23 joules, as opposed to their customer supplied NH35s, which have 24 joules, but it doesn't really matter. Power reserve is the same at roughly 40 hours, and accuracy, if you can call it that, is the same as well. Minus 35 to plus 45 seconds per day. I haven't measured this one because I simply don't care. I didn't buy it for the movement. I don't think anybody else did either. And I didn't buy it for the case finish, which is a very simple, high polish, three piece style vintage case with relative relatively long lugs considering it's compact overall size. Very nicely integrated piece of box dome mineral. Looks a lot like acrylic in the wrist rolls that I've got coming up as you'll see. The 5.6 mil unguarded crown is signed with the Seiko S. It offers plenty of grip for those occasions when you need to set the watch or give the movement a bit of extra juice. I did hint that this strap is a very good one. Not always the case with Pressage models, but most definitely the case here. It's a muted dark brown to allow the golden brown dial to really pop. 
it has cross stitching near the lugs, quick release spring bars if you do ever want to swap it out for something else, and Seiko's signature upside down deployant. I normally flip these around because I just can't get used to the tail being at the bottom rather than the top, but I haven't bothered to do it with this one just yet. The strap is soft, the strap is comfortable, and it looks like it's wearing well on this well-worn example. Now that's all out of the way, let's get back to the dial. I think it's these dynamic shots that really capture its essence best. Now all Seiko cocktail times have real world inspirations and this one is inspired by hoji cha roasted green tea leaves. That's what the dial is supposed to represent. That's why it has this really organic, naturally occurring pattern across its entire surface. It's a fume dial, so it goes from kind of golden sand in the center to a rich tobacco brown at the edges. And it's a dial surface that begs for light. The more light you expose it to, the more it plays around with that light and throws it back at you in a spectacular fashion. You might not be into it, but you can't deny it looks pretty special on a watch costing this amount of money. And I think it's very well proportioned with those big applied numerals on the evens and applied arrowheads on the odds. The Seiko logo is also applied and everything just works with everything else. 38 mil, it's not a big watch, but they've really maximized the dial surface area and they've got the length of all three hands spot on, perfect to the millimeter. The hour hand comes within a whisker of clipping the baton and both minute and second hand push all the way out to the printed minute track. The hands are also those half frosted, half polished dauphines that feature on a lot of press ash models these days and I am personally a total sucker for. There's an applied frame around the date complication at the three, more on that later, and press ash and automatic are printed on in fairly discreet black text above the six. Overall, it's a killer dial, one I think is well worthy of a gong or two. And these little 38 mil cocktail times wear very well, neat, tidy, comfortable, a good strap, soft and compliant leather, short lug to lug. It's definitely a size that could be worn by ladies or the smaller wristed with ease. The only dimension that's a little large is the thickness. And as you can see from these wrist rolls, the domed hard legs has caught out the previous owner of this star bar on more than one occasion. It has quite a few scuffs and scratches. That applies to most domed crystals, so do be warned. But that doming combined with the dial color and those perfectly complementary hands and indices gives this watch a real richness. No offense to the Negroni or the Tequila Sunset, but this one takes the same footprint and elevates it to a whole new level of sophistication. So I clearly love it. I've heaped praise on it and I've given it an award for goodness sakes, but that doesn't mean to say that I think it's perfect. Moans and niggles. Well, I guess if you want one of these, it's not gonna be super easy. You can pay a grand plus Aussie and buy a brand new one, or you can fish around for a used example like I did. And when it arrives, it may well also have scratched hard legs like mine has. Seiko's hard legs is massively overrated. I've ranted about it a dozen times before. I understand in some ways it's an acceptable limitation for the price they're charging for these, but I for one would pay more if it had sapphire in the first place. Some angles the scratches disappear, but other angles like this, they do not, I'm afraid. Of course my camera makes them look much worse than they are from arm's length, but yeah, scratches on hard legs very much come with the territory, particularly with this domed hard legs. This is my Presage Irish Coffee, a watch that has been out the house maybe half a dozen times and already has a scratch in almost exactly the same place near the 11. And if ever there was an argument for deleting the date window on a watch, this is the argument. I know Seiko insists in putting a date on all of these watches they are meant to be run as attractive dailies, and this one probably was in its native Japan, hence the scratches, but I for one would love to have seen a no date version and a bat on at three for a much, much cleaner look to the dial overall. And now I personally have some decisions to make. Do I try and buff out the scratches? Do I try and replace the crystal? Or do I just relax and roll with the scratches? And in a year where I've been trying to reduce the number of watches in my collection, can I justify having two beautiful brown Seiko Pressage cocktail times in my collection at the same time? It's a tough decision to have to make, but a good decision to have to make if you see what I mean. So there you have it, another stunning affordable dial from Seiko. Credit where it's due, they're still the best in the business at making beautiful dials. If you wanna see two more of their beautiful dials, click here or click here. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. I hope to see you again in the next one.